today we're going to be having fun creating our own Minecraft 3D avatar inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, Minecraft is a great, fun game for people young and old. If you don't know Minecraft and if you like design or you like, hey, just relaxing, it might be something worth checking out. So I'm going to open up Illustrator and get started. I'm going to create a new document. And our document can be square, to be honest with you, right? Minecraft's a very square game. So I'm just going to call this Minecraft Avatar. And I'm going to set it up to be 1920 by 1920. I'm only going to do one artboard. You can see my computer's getting a little old. I'm working on getting a new one. So uh, it might be a little sluggish moving things around. You can see how kind of chippity-choppity that was. Now, the first thing we're going to do is drag in some references so we know exactly what we're dealing with. So I'm going to just zoom out once. And over here, I'm going to come to my Finder window. And I've got a couple images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in this image of a creeper here. That's what those guys are called, if you've ever seen them. If you don't know about Minecraft, if you know Minecraft, you know that's a creeper. I'm going to draw in a picture of myself dragged in here, too. Not because I want you to stare at my, my smiling mug the whole time, but I want just a picture of myself so I can do a reference. Because this is about making my own, but we're also going to make a creeper just so you have a sense of reference, okay? So now, the next thing I'm going to do is use the grid tool in Illustrator. Now, if you don't have Illustrator set up the same way, there's a lot of ways to use Illustrator. I'm using the Essentials layout but I've also come down here on the left-hand side, edited my toolbar, and I'm making sure it contains right here my rectangular grid tool and also my live paint bucket. These are primarily the two tools we're going to be using to create our Minecraft avatar. You can use those two mostly, and the rest you can kind of forget about if you're intimidated by it. So the first thing to do is to figure out how we're going to get this sort of block shape, and are we going to draw a bunch of rectangles? And I think the answer is no. Why don't we start by doing some counting? We're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pixels up, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down. Perfect square, eight by eight. So I'm going to click on my grid tool, and I'm just going to click once in my canvas. And you can see I cheated. This is like a baking show. I had this all set up before. I'm going to use the sizes 800 by 800 and 7 dividers. And 7 dividers means you're going to get 8 columns and 8 rows. That's the biggest thing we're looking for. You can make this any size you want, but 800 is nice and big, and you'll be able to see it. So here is my 8 by 8 grid, and it's looking basically how I want it. I'm going to take my creeper in here for reference. And now I'm just going to set a couple things up. I'm going to change it so that instead of it having a stroke and no fill, I'm going to flip it here, where you can hold Shift and press X. And it's going to change it to be fill and no stroke, so there's no outlines. right? These little squares don't have individual outlines. Now we're going to use the paint bucket, the live paint bucket, and get to work. And what you can do is you can hold down Option on your keyboard and sample a color. I'll just sample one green here. And I'm just going to click once, and then it kind of puts me in, like, almost pixel painting mode. I can just bucket, blanket this whole guy. And now I'm going to sample the black. And I'm going to draw on the eyes. What are they? They're one in on either side and two from the top. So here... There's one eye, here is another. And let's do this weird mouth mustache thing. It looks like it starts here, and then it goes out one, down another, and then boop, boop. So we're almost all the way there. And you can just keep repeating this. I know it's going to get a little bit boring at this part, but watch this. I'm just going to keep holding down Option, sampling, and then filling in the corresponding color. Boop, what am I missing? The lower cheek. Here we go. That's one. Two. Home stretch. Three. Four. 
five, six, two more, just under the mouth. Seven and eight. Okay. Now I'm just going to select a tool so that this is not selected. I can press V on my keyboard to get back to that. And look at that. We have a creeper. Now here's the difference, because we could stop here. This could be your Minecraft avatar, and you could just color it in any way you want. But what's really nice about Illustrator, if you've never used it before, is it's not like pixels. So this image, as we zoom in, it gets blurry. Now, if you're even making your own Minecraft textures, this is an interesting way of making sure that you can get them as big or as small as you want. But you can see here this line, they get blurry when they get next to each other, and you get all these extra colors and stuff that aren't really there. And here in our Illustrator version, look at that. You can zoom in as much as you want. It's sharp, sharp, sharp. Okay, are you ready for the fun? I bet you are. I'm going to take my creeper. We know what a creeper looks like now. I'm just going to hit delete and get rid of him. Then I'm going to take this creeper, and I'm going to use an effect to make him 3D. So I'm going to go to Effects, 3D, and I'm going to say Extrude and Bevel. And now what that does is not apparent. I'll cover my face for ready. There I go. What that does is not apparent at first, but I'm going to check off this preview box. And now you can kind of see. Oh, He's kind of looking to the side, and he's very thin. This is a squish-squashed creeper, right? Well, we had some hints when we set up our grid. Whatever number you used for size in your grid, I used 800, if you remember. You can use that same number for extrude depth. So I'm going to change this to 800, and then I'm going to just click somewhere else. It doesn't have to be anywhere else, and boom. All right. Now I've got a square creeper, and it looks just like this cube up here. But I can look at that. I can pose it. <laughs> and my creeper is looking around. And it slowly gets crazier and crazier and crazier. So I'm going to change it again to off-axis front. Now that's good, but it's a little isometric. It's a little like a computer. It doesn't feel like the perspective that you get in Minecraft. So for a little bit more Minecraft perspective, you can play... With this perspective tool, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'll tell you what, 35. Now you're starting to feel a little bit more like that in-game camera, right? Now it's looking a little bit more like how you imagine it would look. Right now our creeper is looking up. And to the left. And yeah, it's true. This is not perfect for doing full 3D Minecraft because you can see the details here all get flattened out on the side. But if you're just looking for an avatar and you do a little bit of an angle like that, I think it goes a long way. Now, the next thing you can do is mess with the lighting. So Illustrator actually lets you drag around lights as if your character is lit. And I'm going to press New. Do a new light and maybe illuminate the top of his head. So we have some shadow here and shadow at the bottom, but if I look down, I'll go down a little bit more, you can see the light is at the top of his head, and you can move it around, and if you want different looks, you can change the intensity, right, and get yourself some shading. But if we're happy with that, our creeper, maybe he's looking slightly up, we'll hit OK. And just like that, a 3D Creeper, a 3D Minecraft avatar in Illustrator. That was pretty quick in an amount of time. So let's see if we can do one for me. I'm going to take my Creeper and I'm just going to put him over here. Now, that same sample that we just did to the Creeper, you can do on a picture of yourself. So get your best picture of yourself. I don't know if this is my best picture, but I'm going to try it. And I'm going to click on my live paint bucket. And since I have to be a square head, I'm just going to select, hold down option, and select right from my forehead, or right in the middle of my face. Oh, this is giving me a little bit of a warning. That's okay. It's probably saying, hey, Ryan, your computer's really slow. You sure you want to do this? <laughs> okay, that's okay. Now maybe I want to go a little bit lighter. Let's see what this looks like. I'm just holding and dragging down my mouse. 
Yeah, that seems about right. Now, why don't I sample some hair? And give myself a little hairdo here. And maybe I'll give myself a little beard. And how about a mustache for good measure and some eyes? Does that make me look crazy? <laughs> I think it does. I'm going to sample some light color, very light gray, and maybe flesh out my eyes a little bit. And how about some glasses? In this picture, I had my blue glasses. I love those glasses. Maybe that's enough. Now what we can do is we can start getting into the business of shading. So find a little bit of a darker shadow on your face. That's a little too dark. Just find a little bit darker. And you can build in cheeks and all sorts of details here. Maybe I'll even bring it down so I'm not totally covering my face. And then the same thing, find a little bit of a brighter spot on your face. Highlight our nose, maybe my mouth, something like that. And I guess I could have done the glasses under too, but I'll find maybe a darker spot on my glasses. How about a lighter spot? So I get all sorts of color, right? And all sorts of different little variations. Maybe I'll do... Is that too much, though? That makes me look like Magneto. I don't want that. Undo. Command Z. And my mustache doesn't really connect, right? So maybe that's good. Maybe that looks a little silly and I could... You know, do something a little bit more like that. I kind of, it looks a little bit more Minecraft to me to do something like this. So now that you have your picture of yourself, in this case, me with my blue glasses, and it, I didn't do under my eyes just because I didn't feel like I had enough space. I would have lost my face a little bit. We're going to go to effect and look at that. Extrude and bevel are already there for me. And it's already set to 35, already set to 800. I'll just turn on my preview. And there I am. And now I can look around in my new <laughs> Minecraft world. Wow. Hi. Wow. Look at it up there. And you can see all sorts of different lines. Just like that. I'll look down. Maybe over to the side. And what's cool about this effect is it is non-destructive, which is a fancy way of saying you can go back and change it. So in properties, over here on the right-hand side, expand will make it permanent. But you can also see 3D extrude and bevel. You can go back in right, and change the angle if you're not happy with it. Turn on your preview so you know what's going on. I'll hit OK. But you can see, if I hit Command-Y on my keyboard, that these still count as flat squares. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I want to make a decision to change a piece of it, maybe I want to take the top of my glasses. This is going to be tough. We're going to have to count. One, two, three. I think three will do my temples. Look at that. There we go. Three down does my temples, right? And so as long as you're doing counting and you're paying attention to where your character is and where all the pixels lie, you can go back in and make those changes. Now you can also just go ahead and press the trash bucket here, this delete, and it'll get rid of it and it'll flatten back out. So you don't always have to edit it like that. You can have a little bit more fun. So now if I want to use this as my avatar on a website or maybe my favorite forum or something or a Minecraft community site, I can click on my artboard tool and I'm going to come over here into properties and I'm just going to make a new one. 
And so now I have enough room for me on this one. And the creeper over here. And don't worry about some of these little bugs here, some of these rendering things. That's that's not too big a deal. And I can size them up. When you size them up, you'll notice, because we're at a perspective, the perspective changes. Leave enough space so that if there's a circle around you, that people can still see it. Remember, you can go back in and let's change the angle so that we can see a little bit more of Mr. Creeper over here. Yeah, that's good. And I think my angle's okay. Maybe just a little bit more of a turn. I'm going to say the second light is up over here so I get more of a shadow on that side of my face. Now I can take these and use my Align palette. If you don't have this open, or any of these, you can go to Window and find it here under Align. And I'm just trying to center. See, the Align didn't even quite work. I'm just trying to center me in the space. Then I can take the Rectangle tool and give myself a little background. And maybe in the background you want to do an image or a Minecraft texture or something. It's supposed to be 1920. I'll come up here and fix it. This is a very fleshy background color. So what I'm doing there is I'm hitting Command, Shift, and then the left bracket. And that's right next to P on my keyboard on my Mac. Command, Shift, left bracket. Now I can take this and maybe I want to sample a color from my glasses or something. And since my glasses kind of blend into it, maybe I want to change it a little bit. Maybe I want to come over here and brighten it up. Something that matches, but is still a little bit different. And now I can take this image and I can export it and use it wherever I want. And that's basically how you can put together a fun 3D Minecraft avatar in Adobe Illustrator. And you can do it pretty quickly. And you bet you can blow it up to any size you want. So if you want to print a big poster of a bunch of Minecraft faces for all your friends, or you want to show this new effect to somebody, you can do it. And it's a really fun and easy way of bringing that Minecraft style into your vector illustrations. All right, everyone, that's it for me today. Have a great day and keep designing. 